I'll be answering a couple of viewer questions today um, as it pertains to your vacations and what to do with your listings and dealing with returns and of course defects. I have a question related to that. And I'm gonna show you a few things uh, that I'm dealing with today. So without any further ado, let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is John from Flippin' Ain't Easy. And as I mentioned before the intro, we're gonna be taking some of your questions. Um, I really don't do this format often, but something I wanted to kind of do today was thinking of doing a live, but thought, you know what? I've got things I wanna do. I'm gonna come out here and get it done. And while I'm out here, I'll just make a video, which is kind of what I'm doing here. So I had a couple uh, questions from viewers and I'll have them in this video. Quite often, and if not almost all the time, I'm always going through my comments and uh, taking questions, giving the best answer that I can, refraining from answering when I don't have an answer, but I certainly appreciate the time that you guys take to uh, put your comments down below and of course your questions. Um, with that said, let me go ahead and get started with the first question. It's from Andy Reno, and uh, he sent this one today and he says, hi John, love your channel. I've got a question on a recent topic you talked about, which is handling time. I'm going on vacation starting tomorrow for eight days. It gives me a choice on bulk edit of five days or 10 days. How do you do that countdown? If anyone can help, I'd be grateful. Thanks, Andy. Now with the weather uh, starting to get good, actually it's a beautiful day out here in Vegas, but I'm sure it's getting that way throughout the country, unless you're Joe DeMarco and your weather is not very good anytime, but I digress. <laughs> If you're contemplating or you're going out of, of state or out of town on vacation for whatever reason, um, and you're a reseller, you can use vacation mode, which I don't use. Many of you guys have watched my videos in the past know that I don't utilize vacation mode, uh, primarily because I'm not gonna be gone more than five or six days at a time, but I wanna continue selling items. And while I'm gone, I'm gonna have my laptop, I'm gonna have my iPad, and I'm gonna work. So I may not be able to list while I'm out and about, but um, if I have my laptop, I can go in and do bulk edits every day to um, you know, keep my store refreshed, um, you know, do my 20 or 0.2% um, discount every day on items older than seven days. Um, and of course, do the sell similar uh, end item process that I've talked about before. Those you can do remotely and don't need any kind of laptop. Now to answer your question, Andy, I don't use vacation mode, but what I think I've talked about before is, let's say I'm gone for five days. So I'll put five day handling. And so what I'll do is I'll show you, you go to your business policies, and then once you're in your business policies, the way I do it is I go in and select um, all of my different shipping policies. So for me, it could be quite a few. I will then go and edit and then I'll hit that drop down. You see in the drop down, there's just so many. There's there's the same day, there's one, two, three, and then after three, it's excessive, and then it's four, five, 10, uh, 20, and 30. And so you would want to choose 10, in this case, if you're gonna be gone for 10 days. While eBay doesn't recommend that you have handling time that long, um, what it does is it allows you to continue to sell your items while you're away. Now, what I would say to do if you happen to sell items while you're away and you say have 10, five to 10 days handling time, make sure you're following up with your buyer with a message stating, hey, um, thank you for buying my item. Uh, I do notice that you bought this. We are uh, dealing with a five to 10 day handling time because we are out on vacation or out of town or whatever you wanna say. Then you wanna maybe finish with, you know, if this is okay with you, uh, you don't need to reply to this email, but if you, uh, do need to cancel, certainly I understand. Now, you don't wanna encourage cancellations, but you don't want to encourage someone to get uh, upset because you know what people don't read sometimes. You know, they don't always look at that date. So it's a good idea to make sure that you communicate effectively with your buyer when they fail to. And so that way you can say you did your due diligence at the end of the day and you're gonna end up with cancellations. But you know, eBay is all about momentum. So if you're constantly while you're away updating your listings, kind of like how, how I told you to, then you're gonna continue that momentum 
a little bit better than if you just shut it down for vacation and then come back and start it all back up. You know, and, and so it just depends. You wanna be dealing with a bunch of items you have to ship when you get back. I know a lot of times we get back from vacation and we're just tired and worn out just from the vacation itself. And uh, you know, it's, it's that thought process. Do I wanna ship out these 10, 20 plus items when I get back? Of course, that's money in your pocket that you don't have if you just put it on vacation mode. Now, one last thing, is what I will do is I will go in daily. So if I have it set for five days, um, I'll go back in and I'll set it for four days the next day, right? It's like a countdown. So then the next day after that, I'll set it to three days. It's like a countdown until I get back. Now I've got a lot of shipping policies. I may have to do that for six or seven different policies, which will apply to all my listings. But at least when that buyer buys the item, it'll give them an actual representation of when to expect that item to arrive. And that's all that matters to me. But if it's anything five days or more, like in your case, I'm sending that buyer a message every time I make a sale because it's just good business. It makes you look good. It clears up any misunderstandings and uh, your buyer is going to be happier with you in the long run. And chances are they may not need it right away. They got the price they're looking for and they're fine waiting for you to come back, but it's better than someone being surprised, sending you all kinds of messages, wondering where their item is. You don't wanna deal with that. So hopefully that answers your question. So I'm out here in the garage today and just wanted to show you guys what I'm dealing with. Again, looking for good sourcing options and I'm kind of dealing with remnants of the stuff that I had here before. Just to show you what I have, I have some of these power washers and these are only like about forty dollars off brand no one's ever heard of that brand before um i just sold one of these this is one that i'm waiting on uh, believe it or not a set of ink cartridges i paid five dollars for it was like five something shipped and uh that just needs a new set of ink cartridges and that was an $8 item that I sold the other one for $139 plus shipping. So if you guys heard, I don't want to deal with printers anymore, but if I can get more than 10x my uh, initial um, buy-in, then I'm definitely good. I have this, uh, this is an, a kayak trolling motor. I've sold a few of these for about 75, 80 bucks. These are like $200 normally. This one's really good and I have um, I had to buy uh, some new attachments for this. Um, but you know, I'll make a video and actually I'll post it and I'll probably list this one pretty quick. Um, you know, and just more of this, just more of the same, a lot of big stuff. You guys know my affinity for big stuff. But this is like a mulcher here. And this is the time of year where people are using it. So um, big box and by Greenworks, big size box. So I'm thinking maybe Marketplace. Here's a Sunjo uh, power washer here. And again, the power washers are kind of a pain. Uh, I have another power washer down here. Briggs and Stratton, that's a good one. And uh, so that's kind of the remnants of the large items. I have a, a tool here, like a saw of some sort. And as you can see, as you can tell, like these boxes aren't in the best shape. Here's a pull hedge trimmer. And uh, this is a PowerTech. And from what I understand, it's so heavy. I haven't messed with it, but it's sort of like an exercise, I believe, an exercise uh, mechanism of some sort. So I don't quite know. And there's. A mystery. I think it's another pull hedge trimmer inside this box. But again, we're dealing with large stuff. And uh, bottom line is, that's what I'm doing today. I'm, I'm messing with all these items. I counted about 10 to 15. And as you can see here, here's some of the stuff that I've picked up recently that I have listed already. These are already on the shelves. So I have my shelving labeled. This one's G5. The other ones are labeled accordingly. And it's always good to have a system in place. This is sort of an impromptu system. Here's some stuff that I have. We're dealing with a bunch of like cables. None of these go for more than five bucks each. 
So maybe I can get the similar cables together and lot them out, but uh, it's really not gonna make me a whole lot of money. And then another power washer, Sun Joe. And so today is power washer day. Come on over to here. I have one of those old Kirby vacuums. Now I've had this one for a, a, quite a while. And these are the attachments from that vacuum. We don't even use it anymore. And uh, so I'm, I'm gonna sell the vacuum, but I was thinking maybe to part this one out. Um, here's a lot of the stuff that we're kind of going through. This is the, uh, the bare bones of the loose, smaller items that we receive in the Amazon boxes and open Gaylords that we normally source from. So this next question comes from Jake Dywert. Uh, a couple days ago, he sent me a message. Uh, Thanks for another video. Off topic, but curious if you've heard of this. Today, I was going through an order history. I noticed a sold item has $0 for the order total. It was an item that buyer made in dishonest return case. They were requesting extra items not in listing and a different color, and then claiming not as described, even though pictures and listing description was exactly what they got. eBay made a final decision in my favor and said no further action needed from my part. Apparently at some point the buyer appealed and they reversed the decision without telling me. Now I'm out the money and the buyer still has the item. I'm truly disgusted. Chat representative said since I was unable to provide a return label, the buyer was able to keep it. I had no idea they needed a return label because I was told final decision was in my favor. Sorry for the rant, but I'm furious and wondering if more experienced sellers like you have dealt with anything like that. So the reason why you're seeing zero there is because you didn't make anything on the sale. It's like uh, similar to when you receive a return and you give a refund, you're gonna see a zero there as well. Now, you didn't make anything on the sale, but um, what I would have done is this. Wouldn't have used the chat feature. Um, certainly, sometimes you can use uh, the feature on uh, Facebook for Business. A lot of people use that, and I use it as well. Um, but what I like to do, because Facebook for Business for me lately has been like one, two, three days, I want to know right away. I want to get this handled. I don't want to wait for it. I don't want to forget that this is out there. So I may use Facebook for Business if the phone call option doesn't work. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a callback request. And when I get that callback request, I'm gonna get that rep on the phone. I'm gonna to ask to speak to the dispute department. And so once they get on the phone, I'm gonna explain the situation to them, just like you explained it here. And you're gonna make reference to the email and have them look at the email that they sent you. Um, for me, that is enough for them. They should be able to honor that final decision. Um, a lot of times what happens with eBay is a, final decision is made and then the buyer will call in the rep doesn't see those notes of course buyers aren't the only ones that don't read either and the rep will simply listen to the buyer um, side with the buyer open a case for the buyer refund the buyer and you're out and this is why sellers feel like ebay doesn't care or have her back and ebay is in this mode and has been in this mode of trying constantly, no matter what, to retain buyers, good or bad, and pushing away sellers, good and bad. And of course, in this case, the thing that concerns me is not only the fact that you lost your money, and I, I'm not sure what kind of grace period you have, I would get on the horn today with eBay and try to get that fixed, but at the very least, you have a defect now because eBay had to go in and um, refund this money on your behalf through this case that was opened. So you want to make sure that they go in and if they can give you that money back, great, but also go in and get that defect removed because that's going to hurt you in the long run. When you have defects on your account, it certainly hurts your ranking in search. So get that fixed. Contact eBay as soon as you can, not by chat. Stop doing that. Use the phone and get someone on the line, not the first rep that speaks to you, get someone from the dispute department that has a little bit more experience dealing with this that can give you the, uh, the service that you need. Hopefully that works for you. Comment down below, let me know how that turns out. So this is my dad's laptop. For those of you who may have watched this channel from its inception, 
would know that my, my dad passed away about two years ago. And it's just taken up until now for me to even consider listing it. It's something I've, I've kind of come across and I've put aside. And um, honestly, I uh, am just getting around to doing it now. So that kind of leads to my question. Have you guys ever had to be in a position to sell an item from a loved one and uh, just kind of couldn't bring yourself around to do it? Well, it's kind of what I'm doing right now. You know, it's a, an older laptop, um, at least five or six years old. And of course, if I would have sold it two years ago, it would have had more value than it does now. But honestly, um, I, gotta, I gotta get rid of it. It's just sitting around here. It's not doing anyone any good. And the laptop, it's in pretty good condition. You know, I'm, I'm finding that the battery might have a problem because um, whenever I unplug it, it, it powers off. So, you know, not sure what I can get for it, but you know what, gotta stop holding on to it, gotta let it go. So tell me what you guys think down below. Tell me if you've had that kind of a situation um, where you're just kind of holding on to things for sentimental value when you know you're never gonna use it and, uh, it's probably best to be listed and, and gotten rid of. Um, if you're in that same situation, I certainly understand, but um, you're gonna kind of wish in you know a year, two, five, that you may have moved on from those items because they're not doing you any good, just holding on to them. So guys, what do you think? Comment down below. I uh, gave you a little snapshot of what I'm doing today, what I've been doing today, um, messing with these power washers and these larger items, um, selling my dad's laptop, we're getting down to the last uh, bit of items that we have for resale. And yes, I continue to supplement with the Goodwill uh, items that I find. I found about four more the other day. But, you know, for me, I need more than that. I need more items than just four a day here, four a day there. I'm going to continue scratching and scraping. Um, but bottom line is, I'm going to be honest with you the entire way. And I'm struggling right now. But hey, that's on me. Not a, a wine or anything like that. It's just real life. That's what's going on. Um, but whether or not you're in the same position or maybe you're thriving, and I hope you are, this is just another example of how flipping ain't easy. And I want you guys to have an excellent remainder of your weekend, and we will talk to you very soon.